And so it's unbelievable to see your work reflected in the eyes of, of people that love it is incredibly complimentary. And, and it feels on, you know, you're honored by having that response. It's rare that you get to experience it. Um, you know, I, I think that we, we were involved recently in a fan's uh, view of the of the set where all the fans of all, and what, who'd, who'd been involved in the competition were able to walk around the set. And the the uh, It's just extraordinary. And um, I, I got hugs and, and people in tears and it just, it is a it is an overwhelming experience to stand in that street and be in that bookshop when you didn't think, even though you knew, but you didn't quite know it really existed as a place that you could walk around in is quite phenomenal. Phenomenal. So, my feeling is that uh, we, we all choose, to, we would all, if possible, choose to live where we believe and in within an environment that we believe suits us doesn't suit anyone else as a fingerprint thing. It's like, where are you most comfortable? Where will you read the, where are you most comfortable to read or to write or to watch a program? Or where do you feel the most secure? That bookshop is, is an anchor point visually for the show and always has been an anchor point since day one. And it is where you feel most secure. It's where you, the door closes, you feel safe within it. And what, what emanates or resonates with that bookshop, not only from the character and the position that, uh, or who, who Azura Fail is, is that everybody that walks into that bookshop feels the same thing. Everyone that walks in that bookshop, uh, I've said it before, just want to live upstairs and drink red wine and read books all day. And they feel comfortable and they feel nostalgic and um, you know it, it creates a, a sense of security and, um, and protection. And I think that if you can create that sort of sentimentality in something that's that's that you're walking around in it must transcend the lens and it obviously does because people feel it all the time and um they want to go there and sit around in the corner and uh and feel comfortable so i think i think that from character point of view i started really emotionally from a zero fail and um neil whenever i've thought of a, a great idea that i tell neil about and, and he tells me how amazing uh, it might be or how fantastic or inspired it was, um, I, I suddenly start to realize it's probably in the book or it's probably uh, in the script between the lines. What stimulates my apophenia, what stimulates my vision and my emotional motivation to, de to design anything is what I can see in the page. So if he has written something so universally empathetic to an audience, then I'm seeing the same thing you are. Um, in, in my variation, but it really is the same warmth or the same sentimentality, as I said, or any of those things. So if I can find how to get my, my fingernails under the edge of that, how I can actually depict it, then I know that I'm, it's going to work. And, um, and that's obviously, and, and you can believe in it then, and you can say it with all honesty rather than impersonate your love for something or say something because your ego tells you you should or or produce something that's a duplicate of something you saw once in Italy. This is something you've got to feel that's specific to the project and specific to the written word, you know. Uh, you, I must admit, reading the book the first time, it was difficult to get my head around how it was going to be depicted. You've got to be very careful that you don't impersonate what you've seen before. You don't copy and then call it original when it's not, because that's, a, that's sort of like a, a cop-out. You really honestly have to live with it 24 hours a day, or even while you're asleep, and search and search and search and search to find what it is that gets your fingernails under it, to find out what it is you really believe in. And it sounds so ethereal, but it's absolutely true. If you can get that, if you can openly find that, um, and you've got to feel that, if you can get that, then, then, then you're on one. You're absolutely on something you can invest in, and then something you can produce. Because then it's not something that's duplicated. All the furniture, literally all the furniture, all of the dressing on the walls, all of the bookshelves are all built. But uh, Bronwyn, um, a set decorator, will buy me a lot of brown furniture that she finds is really interesting furniture. Furniture that's got spindles and hand hand carved pieces and uh, reliefs in it. And she gets me stuff that she believes goes with the character of the place. And then I'll break it open 
and uh, I mean, this is what construction, I love working with construction with because I'll break it open, cut it down, reattach it, and I'll remake whole well, walls of bookshelves like in the magic shop that none of it existed until we put together loads of stuff the set decorator found, that Bronwyn found, and then all that stuff ends up having a profile of the period or uh, echoes to you tri little visual trip, ha trip hazards of the period of size and weight but it isn't really anything you've ever seen before. It's not from a hire shop, it's not from a piece of furniture you bought and just plunked there because the camera sees things differently and we have to lift all that up and make it bigger and, and larger and scale to punctuate the vision. So all of that is, there's all sorts of theories I could go on forever, you know. I, I was saying to Brom today that I, I think I've been working all my life on trying to raise my intellect to to us to a, to be able to incorporate a vocabulary to explain what it is I do creatively. I, I'm not there yet. <laughs>